Thank you very much, David. And we will move swiftly on um, to the final presentation of the morning, which is from Inga Walker from IWG Consulting, who was heavily involved in developing the Gothia Tech standard for smokeless tobacco in Sweden. And maybe there are some lessons that we are able to, to learn from that process. So I'll just pass the next question. It's a uh, smokeless uh, tobacco product and uh, the Gautier Tech standard that was developed uh, by Swedish Match. And uh, uh, this uh, really deals with history as well. Uh, Snus is available as a loose product, loose uh, powder, or in a more sophisticated uh, pouch form. It's uh, uh, moist to semi-moist uh, product, you put it into your mouth, and uh, the process uh, comprising heat treatment. It's not a fermented product. It's uh, used quite a lot in Sweden, mainly by men. You can see from the figures that in uh, 1988, 27% of men smoke daily, uh, 2014, 10%, but uh, the uh, SNES figures uh, remain fairly constant. This uh, product was banned in the EU in 1992, Sweden entered the EU in 1995, and got an exemption. A bit about the background. Uh, Snus and chewing tobacco are under the uh, Swedish Food Act since uh, 1971. 1982, a modernization occurred with a new manufacturing plan for Snus, which included not only the heat treatment but a closed system. And in 1985, the company Swedish Match said that they wanted an unobjectionable snus, and um, that uh, really meant you had to go back to agronomy, chemistry, toxicology, human health studies, and the major issues at that time were uh, tobacco-specific nitrosamines and dense pyre. And, uh, so what was started was really a program for tobacco harm reduction. Uh, the, <coughs> then in 1992, as I said, there was a ban on SNRs in the EU. You can say that's the ultimate regulation. And uh, they made no distinction between smokeless tobacco types according to toxicity and also said it's not possible to regulate according to toxicity. I didn't agree. And then in the 1980s and 90s, there were extensive research programs. And uh, you can say that the product was uh, completely, or almost completely, reformulated. And also, when uh, when you do such a work, you need to have a very good infrastructure with the methods for chemical analysis, quality assurance program. And uh, <coughs> to go back a bit uh, to, back, uh, to uh, SNPs and the Swedish Food Act, the uh, food regulation is one aspect is consumer protection by product regulation. And snares and chewing tobacco, you put them into your mouth, but they are not food. It's important to, to recognize that. And uh, I think it's an advantage, uh, or was an advantage, to be under the Swedish Food Act because uh, you. It's a bit difficult to, to 
to be in a gray zone without regulation. And food regulation gives you some guidance. Also, food authorities are good about trace compounds, uh, toxic compounds, because as we have heard, all food contains toxic compounds, and they can deal with that. Uh, also, uh, the food authorities put a limit uh, for death in uh, snus and chewing tobacco. I, I don't know why, but at least there were limits. And now to the Gautia Tech Standard. It was published in 2001, and it was a voluntary quality standard for Swedish snus. It comprises a manufacturing standard, a constituent standard, and a consumer information standard. And also, it was a commitment by the company to the consumers that uh, they should abide by the, with this standard. And uh, the standard itself looks like this. Nitrite, the tobacco-specific nitrosamines, and NDMA, it's a volatile nitrosamine, or in a way related to the microbial stability of the product. Uh, Benzpyrene, that's uh, 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 form you incomplete combustion and you have it in many foodstuffs. This is also true for the uh, uh, heavy elements, cadmium, lead, and so on. How do you select, or how did we select these compounds, and how do you put a limit? The basis was an article by Hoffman and Djordjevic about uh, toxic compounds in smokeless tobacco. Uh, their list is longer than the Gautia Tech standard because some of the compounds they listed were present in such small quantities. So uh, there were no methods for quantitative analysis at that time. And the justification is that most of the compounds listed are uh, uh, human carcinogen or uh, probably human carcinogen. Limits, you do like you do in, in food regulation, you take into account both toxicity and the natural levels. TSMA, tobacco specific nitrosamines, they are basically specific to tobacco, but the remaining compounds are such that you can find in uh, food stuff. And the levels, the limits set are comparable <coughs> with the limits found in many food items. What has happened after 2001? The ESTOC European Smoke Test Tobacco Council has a regulatory proposal and it's, it's built on the Gautia Tech Standard and the Swedish Food Act. TOGREG, which is a body of the, the WHO, <coughs> uh, proposed in 2009 that two of the tobacco-specific nitrosamines NNN and NNK in smokeless tobacco should have a limit as said there, and also BAP should have a limit. In uh, 2012, Swedish Match adopted this, uh, this proposal and put it into the, to the Gautia Tech standard. And uh, this year, the Swedish authorities proposed that these limits for N plus N and K and VAP should also be introduced in the, into the Swedish Food Act. And uh, TOPREG this year proposed that arsenic, cadmium, and lead should be monitored in tobacco. 
So I think it's fair to say that the OTR tech standard has had uh, an impact on, uh, on uh, uh, authorities. But simultaneously, I think it's important to remember this standard was developed for SNOOS as a response, partly uh, uh, because of the ban in the EU, and uh, if the tobacco harm reduction comprises many other aspects, and I, I think uh, you should consider those and not uh, just take the Gautier Tech standard as a general standard for everything. Thank you. Okay, so if I could call um, our two respondents up, Lou and 